JFT just fair and direct. Welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week April the 18th until April the 22nd. I am Harald Amospisuros, Head of Research uh, here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, there are no major central banks deciding on monetary policy this week, but that is far from suggesting a quiet trading activity. We have several several companies reporting their earnings results, while in terms of economic data, we get Canada's and New Zealand's CPIs for March and the first quarter respectively, as well as the, pre the preliminary PMIs for April from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. Releases which could well uh, reshape expectations around monetary policy. On Thursday, we will get to hear from Fed Chair Jerome Powell, while on Sunday, it is the second round of the French elections with incumbent President Macron racing against uh, Marine Le Pen. Now, let's take things from the beginning and in more detail. On Monday, during the Asian session, we already got China's GDP for the first quarter, as well as the nation's fixed asset investment, industrial production, and retail sales, all for the month of March. Economic activity slowed somewhat in the first quarter, but not as much as the forecast suggested, something that took the year-over-year -year GDP rate up to 4.8% from 4%. Industrial production fixed asset investment also slowed by less than anticipated. Only retail sales came in worse than expected, with the year-over-year -year rate diving uh, further into the negative territory. Now, as for the rest of the day, we don't have any major economic releases on the agenda, as it is uh, Easter Monday for most uh, nations under our radar. However, we do get some earnings results with both the Bank of America and Bank of New York Mellon reporting today ahead of the US Open. The season kicks into higher gear during the rest of the week with reports including uh, Netflix on Tuesday and Tesla on Wednesday. Now, on Tuesday, the only item on the economic uh, front uh, worth mentioning, the only items, excuse me, on the economic uh, front worth mentioning are the U.S. building permits and housing starts, uh, both for March, with both uh, readings expected to have uh, declined somewhat. Now, on Wednesday, the main item on the agenda is Canada's CPIs for March. The headline rate is forecast to have risen to 6.1% percent year over year from 5.7 percent but the core one is forecast to have slid to 4.5 from 4.8 percent this could mean that the rise in the headline rate may be due to temporary factors like food and energy however even the, if the core rate slides uh, somewhat a reading of 4.5 percent is still well above the bank's objective of two percent and this it is unlikely to alter the bank of canada's uh, policy plans remember that last week the bank hiked by 50 basis points with governor macklem stressing the need for higher rates and adding that they are prepared to move uh, more aggressively if the situation uh, weren't so thus even if the core CPI rate slides somewhat, we still see the case for the Bank of Canada to lift rates higher in the months to come. This is likely to keep the loony, the loony support that against currencies like the yen, the euro, and the Aussie, the central banks of which are not so hoggish. Yes, market expectations with regards to the RBA are very hoggish, but the bank itself, the RBA itself, has not officially confirmed whether that's realistic, at least not yet. Uh, on the other hand, a potential slide in Canada's underlying inflation could bring the currency under some selling interest against the US dollar, as it could mean that, yes, the Bank of Canada could continue hiking rates, but not as aggressively as the Fed. 
Now, as for the rest of Wednesday's events, Eurozone's industrial production for February is coming out and the forecast points to a slowdown to 0.8% month over month from 1.3%. None uh, nonetheless, this is likely to drive the year-over-year -year rate up to plus 0.8% from minus 1.3%. Now on Thursday, during the Asian session, we get more CPIs, this time from New Zealand and for the whole first quarter of 2022. The quarter over quarter rate is anticipated to have risen to 2% from 1.4%, something that would drive the year over year rate up to 7.1% from 5.9%. Now last week, the RBNZ lifted uh, its official cash rate by 50 basis points as well, but Although the queue spiked higher initially, it was quick to give back those gains and trade even lower in the aftermath. In our view, this was because the RBNZ said that it remained comfortable with the outlook for the official cash rate as outlined back in February and that the larger move this time was intended to provide more policy flexibility. In other words, they hiked more uh, by more basis points now but they could slow down later as they kept the, uh, the forecasts for the forecast horizon uh, unchanged. In any case, further acceleration in inflation is unlikely to allow policymakers to calm down so easily. Expectations of more bold action may increase uh, if we see the year over year uh, rate rising to 7.1%, which could result in a corrective uh, bounce in uh, the New Zealand dollar. Now, later in the day, we get inflation data from uh, the Eurozone as well for the month of March. However, this will be the final data for the month. And as it is always the case, both the headline and core rates are forecast to confirm their, their, their preliminary estimates. The Euro is unlikely to respond uh, to this uh, data set. Now, during the U.S. session, Fed Chair Jerome Powell is scheduled to speak at the spring meeting of the International Monetary Fund, while later in the day he is due to take part in a panel discussion along with ECB President Christine Lagarde. After raising interest rates at its latest gathering, the FOMC is now expected to deliver a double hike when it meets uh, next, while there is a nearly 65% chance for another 50 basis points liftoff in, uh, in June. Investors are even assigning a 30% chance for a triple hike in June. Thus, with that in mind, it will be interesting to see whether Powell, uh, whether Powell will maintain an ultra hoggish tone, something that could um, that could encourage some more USD buying. At the same time, following a cautious approach at last week's ECB meeting, we don't expect uh, Lagarde to sound similarly aggressive. At the press conference following last week's gathering, she said that uh, they will only start raising some time after the end of the asset purchase program, which is expected uh, to be over in, uh, in, 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 the, in the third quarter. It could be weeks after that or even several months, she added. So we expect her. We expect her to stick to her uh, cautiously, or, or let's say, dovish approach compared to the Fed. Something that could highlight again the divergence between the Fed and the ECB, and perhaps push the euro-dollar uh, currency pair uh, even lower. Now, on Friday. Uh, most of the market attention is uh, likely to fall on the preliminary uh, PMIs for April from uh, the Eurozone, the UK and the US. Both uh, Eurozone's um, uh, manufacturing and services indices are expected to have slid, but to have remained above the boom or bust zone of 50, which separates expansion from contraction. This is likely to take the composite PMI down to 54 from 54.9. Further slowdown in Eurozone's economic activity is likely to confirm the notion that the ECB may need to proceed more carefully with raising interest rates than some other major central banks like the Fed and the, like the Fed, the Bank of England and the Bank of Canada, and could add some more selling interest to, uh, to the Euro. 
There are no forecasts for the UK PMIs, while in the US expectations are for a fractional uh, decline in the manufacturing index and no change in the services one, with both indices staying near the 58 heart. We don't expect this to uh, change expectations around an aggressive uh, tightening path by the FOMC. As for the rest of Friday's events, during the Asian trading, Japan's national CPIs for March are coming out, while later in the day we get retail sales from the UK and Canada for the months of March and February respectively. Now finally, on Sunday we have the second round of the French presidential elections with the final TV debate scheduled for Wednesday. The opinion polls suggest a 53% support for incumbent President Emmanuel Macron against 47% for uh, challenger Marine Le Pen, suggesting a very tight uh, fight on April the 24th. Le Pen is a Eurosceptic uh, candidate and although she ditched past ambitions for a Frexit or getting out of the Euro, a potential victory of hers could mean a 100 degree spin for France from being a driving force for European integration to being more cautious on, any, on EU decisions and plans. With that in mind, we suspect that a a Le Pen victory may be negative for the Euro, while the opposite may be true in case Macron uh, comes uh, out victorious. However, we don't believe that the potential rebound in case Macron uh, wins the elections, we don't expect a potential rebound to, to also signal a trend reversal in the common currency as, as uh, the Euro could continue feeling the heat of the uncertainties around the war in Ukraine, the slowdown in Eurozone's economic activity and the divergence in monetary policy between the ECB and other major central banks like the Fed and the Bank of England. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, for watching and uh, listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again not next Monday because we will not have a weekly market outlook webinar, but uh, the following one, which is on, um, on uh, May the 2nd. Now, if you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around uh, 8.30 a.m. GMT time. So, goodbye, have a nice day and a better rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.